There was no vibrancy left in the mushroom. It would seem the mushroom was not at home. Had the voice slithered down into the network of roots below? There was no way for you to know, so it's not something for you to worry about. A shudder shot across your skin, overcoming a haze that collected at the corners of your mind. You discovered the rain ceased, yet the howling wind remained. The night magnified your nocturnal urges to crawl under the crust of the earth and stay there. Hunger gnawed away at your stomach, the ache of tiredness clung to your limbs. How much further? Were you willing to go? It was so dark out there. What little light you had was from the glowing amber twinkling above your head, reaching up to the glowing shard, and with a little gentle tugging, you pried the amber out. Thank goodness, its light didn't go out. In the corner of your eye, something else had changed about your appearance. A necklace hung around your neck. Well, perhaps half of one. A silver link chain dropped into a pendant, shaped like a cage lantern. It was the perfect size to fit the amber into. Finding a latch on the back, you popped the shard inside. Immediately, the light became several times brighter. The lantern pendant acting as an enchanter of sorts. Pulling yourself out from the shelter of the tree, you used its trunk as purchase to finally stand upright. Wrapping the cloak tight around you, there was only one path to follow, one route to take. And so, you marched onwards. You were tired of walking. The never-ending path betwixt the trees made your eyes droop with weariness. Could it carry on forever? It could if it wanted to. Suddenly the temperature dropped. What could possibly have caused such a phenomenon? Your breath emerged in white clouds. Something changed. The wind terraformed into a burst of white, encircling you, pelting your cloak with what looked like fluffy flakes of snow. You were stunned. Snow. All around. Snow? But it had been so mild before. The afternoon had been like an early summer's day. A distinct line broke across the forest. No snow fell behind you, but the woods were awash with white. In front of you, stepping towards the snow, it evaporated before your boot could hit the ground. The path was there completely void of snow, clean, crisp lines of white on each side of the path, as if held back by some invisible force. Stunned but not surprised at the abilities of your magical attire, you walked ahead. Ethereal trees nodded in an icy breeze. Leaves flickered in the wind, rustling their way through thickening curtains of white. The snow was coming down harder now, making travel more difficult as it fell on your body. It couldn't be any colder than this. And you could just keep going anyway. What else could you do? Snow entrapped you in its muffled silence. And that was when you saw it. In the distance, a little light. A house sat in a clearing. In the deep furrows of this dark forest stood a gothic stone cottage, dusted in fresh snow, with its unearthly spires and large grey stones, an ominous feeling pulsated in the atmosphere. Something important 
but powerful was here. A medieval looking door, one of thick dark wood secured its entrance. Only a small window to the left emitted any light in the dark. When you drew closer, the smell of herbs drifted through the air, and the air itself grew warmer. The atmosphere around the abode seemed to be glowing with the snow. White pine burrows surrounded the house, casting sharp shadows as you treaded the rapidly appearing cobblestone path. An image of a scarlet bird cast in glass stood guard to the outside. The smell of smoky spices peppered the crisp air, a small light glowed inside, looking down your necklace flickered in retaliation. This is where you were supposed to go. Your knuckles tapped on the wood. No stirring of movement. Not a sound could be heard from the other side of the door. And then, oh, a break. An invitation to come inside. An open door let the warmth seep out to you. Come along, come along, seek it out. There's nowhere else to hide. You stepped inside. <coughs> The home of an old world cradled you in its ambience, all soft and mysterious in its dim candlelight, medieval in its tone, gothic in its execution, a hint of the fantastical about it, but not necessarily anything out of place, but everything just slightly out of place. Rugs, the colour of mauled wine, splashed through the corridor. Sconces slint your way to the rooms ahead, glowing faintly in the night, casting soft shadows into all the rooms. Your fingertips grazed the stone wall, and the wooden floor creaked with purpose. Ahead, the walls were covered in tapestries with images that you had no recollection or history of, meticulously made. They looked as if they had been woven by hand. It was beautiful, but also intimidating. There wasn't enough space for you. It felt like the cottage in the woods all fairy tales led to. A staircase leads you down towards the cellar. Statuesque candelabras flickered softly as you descended the steps. In the corner was the cellar door, over which hung a curiously, haphazardly made tapestry. Emblazoned on it was a warning. It said, guard and beware. An unlicensed phantom is lurking in the room behind this wooden hatch. Hmm, very foreboding. Darkness resided there, but you had the feeling if you don't go down looking for things that don't concern you, they won't hurt you. You climbed back up the stairs and returned to where you started. As you studied your surroundings, the elaborate decorations battled to get your attention. One prevailed. A portrait. A picture-perfect rendition of a woman haunted the corridor. Her features followed you as you walked by, her eyes an abyss below, and her pale skin marked with the stigmata of a victim. The smudge of her existence struggled in your apprehension. You felt ill the longer you stared. You hurried past her. The sensation remained, scurrying towards the door up ahead. Without a second thought or look, you shoved the door open and landed in the room. It was the heat that welcomed you first. Then the smell of cooking almost took you away, back to the thought of home, until your stomach urged your feet forwards. Food, it cried. We cannot go on without it. 
heaving the thick wooden door shut, an old kitchen stood before you. Your senses showered with an abundance like no other. Amber bottles were littered around on the shelves, some full but most were partly used. Unusual herbs hung from the wall in bunches. Bags of large white granules were slumped into the back corner of the room. A roaring fire was caged in the hearth of the great stone fireplace. Above a cast iron kettle with water hung on a hook and turned over the happily crackling flames. In addition, three triangular cauldrons spun softly within the hearth, like giant iron pyramids or fantastical potion bottles. There was quite a howl in the chimney, the weather outside taking a wild turn. The light from the fire reflected off the walls and shone on the polished wooden surfaces. A few small items decorated the room, a vase with freshly cut flowers that had yet to wither, some old wrinkled books resting on a shelf near the door. It seemed there were no signs of life in the kitchen, taking up most of the space were three chairs surrounding a great table of dark wood. They doubt appeared to be portions of food and drink, but Everything was blurred. The more you studied a meal, the more disjointed and indecipherable it became. That was until you sat at a chair and everything came into focus. The platter morphed and churned to match your own preferences. But looking around, there was some food you had no idea what they could be. Wine infused with green nettles sat across a gently bubbling blue mead. Candied flower buds rested in what looked like an oversized cocktail glass, with its light pink petals crystallized in a case of clouded shell. If you consumed the materials of other creatures, meats and cheeses shimmered into existence oozing over heavenly warm fresh bread. Colourful strips of what looked like pasta, but had the texture of bell peppers when you bit into them. If you consumed only the bounty of flora, a beautiful assortment of berries, nuts and breadsticks was a wonderful sight. Strange purple and red vegetables steaming on their plates. An aromatic bread, warm as a hearthstone, plonked onto a plate at your side. A large wooden bowl of absolutely divine fruit parfait popped up from nowhere. This banquet was created and prepared for your palate alone. This table appeared to give you plenty of food for the evening, more than you could consume and consume you did. You tore into one mouth-watering food to the next. Your drink tasted something akin to honey milk, though the comparison wasn't even close to the delightful notes that coated your tongue. The section for dessert was even better. Plum-covered scalloped biscuits were stacked like pancakes. Taking a bite of one, it tasted like red velvet cake but in biscuit form. In a small jar was a sticky red syrup. With a small spoon you scooped it up and placed it in your mouth. Amazing! It was like a strawberry and an apple pulled into one mouthful, and the aftertaste had a roundness of ginger about it. You spread it over the biscuit and ate several more like this. Everything was delicious. You could have kept eating if your stomach would have allowed it. Embers flickered in a wrought iron lantern, and above a mantle made of brick and stone, 
a wooden box slipped open by itself. What was inside could only be described as an angel skull, elongated eye sockets and cheekbones. Wearily the skull opened one eye and looked at you, the newcomer, almost falling out of your chair. You began with apologies, stuttering, explanations through a frightful expression, yet the skull paid you no mind. A guest. Why, this is not unwelcomed. Not at all. I was merely waiting for the blizzard to abate so that I could continue my trip. It seems that even in death, it is not enough to deter a person from the journey on which he was meant to go. I fear no dire beasts, nor no deadly fiends. But what I do fear is the wrath of the foul creature that lurks in this cottage. Hmm? It was sheltering here from the cold for the night too. Can bones even feel the cold? Wait, none of it was making sense. Even though you knew it wasn't supposed to. When you began to ask this conversational cranium, where it hailed from, an eye burned through your presence, dead center from the direction you came. In the doorway, a woman wrapped in a mantle of silver and shadow, her beauty cold, her gaze, eyes. You come to her and you know her secret, but she will not show you, not now, not ever, sparkling. Precious gems with nothing compared to her eyes. Her face, a Pacific coastline at the mercy of a typhoon season. Pale, smooth skin, ominous black sheets of hair collected around her elegant face. The moon and its reflection cast in the ocean. Dark, but glittering for your presence. Before you could utter a word, she stormed across the room, snapped the box shut, and screamed with the fury of a thousand warriors. And who are you? Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching my video, and a happy new year to you all. You'll notice now that there are three parts to each chapter. I've decided every three months I'll be posting three chapters and then after I'll be having um, a month off. Just so you know for the future when you wonder where on earth I've gone. <laughs> I'm not entirely happy about how I wrote this chapter, but I mean, I'd be writing it all year if I could. Anyway, I hope I'm happier with the next chapter. Please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you want. And take care for now. Bye bye.